Hey, it's Vaz here from Aussie RC Playground and welcome to my first look at the Sky RC Ultimate Duo 400 Watt Charger. Now, I actually picked this one up from Banggood and uh, as you can see, I've already taken it out of the box because I wanted to have a bit of a play around with it first, just so that I'm a bit familiar with the charger and I kind of know what it can and can't do and just give you a little bit of feedback on the couple of batteries that I've charged on it so far. Uh, so before we start talking about the charger and getting into a little bit more detail, uh, let's just look at uh, the box and what how it comes packaged up, I guess. Uh, now on the uh, side here, it goes through some of the features and you can see that it's been damaged up a little bit in uh, transport. Uh, thankfully, this is actually pretty well packed inside. There's actually quite a lot of foam in here to, to protect the charger. So the charger was fine. Box has seen better days though. Uh, so this can support up to 7S uh, lithium polymer batteries, terminal voltage control, uh, re-peak mode for NIM and NICODE batteries, battery voltage meter, which is a really good one as well. Um, battery internal resistance meter. This is something that I haven't seen on any of the previous charges I've had in the past. Um, it also has 150 watt to 10 amp um, uh, power supply with dual output. Uh, so this is referring to these dual output ports back here. We'll talk about those in a second. Uh, PC communication USB port for uh, firmware updates and so forth. Two channel charge, two different kinds of batteries simultaneously. So you could have a LiPo in one and a nickel metal hydride in another, uh, which is pretty standard for most of these uh, sort of multi-port chargers. Uh, support charging power distribution and sy synchronous mode available. I'm not sure what that last one is. Uh, but here's some uh, just pictures just basically going over what that is there. Um, on this side here, we have some of the specs on the charger and you're welcome to pause the video so you can read through those. Um, and on the back, it kind of talks about this dual port system that's going on here. So this can give you DC out. So your Ultimate Dual 400 can supply 150 watts of DC power channel two. You can use it to power equipment that requires DC power. It converts standard household power, 100 watts to 240 volts, uh, sorry, 100 watts to 240 volts AC to uh, six to 15 volts DC power, uh, which is pretty cool. However, uh, there is something that disappointed me about this feature and I'll talk to you about that in a second. So we'll get rid of the box and uh, let's have a look at the contents and everything that you get with it. I'm just going to quickly perhaps uh, just reposition the camera uh, so we can have a better look at the charger. Okay, so now that we've got everything set up here, let's go through, uh, first of all, this little sort of blank booklet. This is your instruction manual. Uh, inside I found this. This is an optional part that you can get so that you can charge things like uh, DJI batteries. Um, so that's a very cool thing to, uh, to have an option for, I suppose. So you don't necessarily need to have um, uh, DJI chargers to charge your DJI type batteries. Uh, these, you can get these ports and it allows you to charge those uh, specifically. There's actually a setting in here that says DJI batteries from memory. I think I've come across that while I was uh, uh, setting up the charger to charge a couple of my LiPos. So instruction manual, obviously uh, quite a lot of literature to go through here. Uh, quite a lot of information. If you're unfamiliar with charging uh, LiPo batteries and you want to know uh, what it can and can't do or how to do it, this is obviously going to be a valuable piece of information to hold on to and read through in your own time. Now, uh, cables and wiring, of course you have the uh, balance ports here for your balance leads. Uh, they will plug in here as it says there, balance ports. So, uh, good that they've sent those. There's also a couple of XT60 uh, ports. So these are already pre-wired, ready for your XT60 uh, type uh, batteries. And uh, then they also give you a couple of blank ones. So you can connect whatever kind of connector you want to put on the end here. So that's actually really cool that they've supplied a, a couple of those. Um, and yeah, you can put whatever plug you want to put on the end. Now the plug that this came in that, that goes into the wall is a kind of a European plug as you can see here. Uh, the good thing about it is it uses kind of your standard uh, sort of plug that goes into your back of a PC. So you can just pop into uh, a local PC shop and buy these for a couple of bucks. Um, these cables aren't worth very much so there's no point really getting an adapter for this. You may as well just go and uh, um, and get a, a separate cable uh, that has your own type of plug. Uh, if you get one like I did where, um, you know, it has a European plug on it. So uh, here is the charger itself. So we'll have a, a bit of a close look at it here. Um, and you can read through all that. There's all the ports, all the extra things that you can plug into it. Uh, down the side here, as you saw earlier, you've got uh, XT90 connector here for DC input. So you could probably use this out on the field um, as long as you have a, a means to power it up. And I'm, I'm assuming that that would be it here. 
uh, although this is quite big and heavy to really take out on the field. Uh, this is your DC out port, so you've got two of those there. Um, around the back here, you can see where the plug goes into, and you've got an on and off switch just there. Um, and then down the side, there's just really nothing, it's just a fan, same as on this side. Underneath though, it's very well ventilated, obviously to keep the heat out, and you've got four little rubber feet, obviously to keep this guy from uh, sliding around on your on your bench and so forth. So what I'm gonna do now very quickly is I'm going to uh, plug, it, plug it in, we're gonna get a couple of batteries and I'm gonna show you the menus and how it all works. Uh, so let's get that organized. Right, we're all set up. So I've got a couple of batteries here. We're gonna quickly just put them on charge and I'm gonna show you some of the features uh, and functions of this particular charger. So first thing you wanna do is obviously turn the charger on. And you'll hear that the fans kinda of come on temporarily just to sort of, I don't know, um, exhaust some heat that it may have accumulated while it was sitting there um, and these are the menus that you see first up hopefully you can read that on screen uh, so on this port one I'm going to be charging up a, a 3S battery uh, so we're just going to quickly plug in here and obviously plug it into the correct port uh, just there so you can see how that's plugged in uh, now we will go to enter and you can see that it's set at 20 amps, which is a bit high for this uh, 3500 milliamp. So I'm gonna hit enter quickly, and I'm actually gonna go forward because it kind of loops over. So it's now at 0.1 amp, um, and I'm gonna go up to about, we'll go to three and a half to play it safe. So three and a half amps for a 3500 milliamp. Uh, 3S, it's done, ready to go. So I can press and hold that button. Does my little check, and I can start charging. So now it's charging the battery. We can click on the, uh, I think it's the plus sign. There we go. And that takes you to each individual cell and it'll tell you uh, where it's charged up to on each cell. Uh, so very good that you can see that pretty much right away. Now the other one that we're gonna charge is just a, a little 2S battery. It's a 500 milliamp. And uh, because I'm using XT30 connectors, I've got a little adapter here just so that I can plug it in uh, to the charger here with the XT60. And again, I'm going to plug this into the 2S port just quickly. And I think this one might be a little bit drained, but we'll see. So LiPo battery, we go in there. Uh, this one's at three and a half amps for a 3.7 volt. I've got the voltage right, but let's go into there. We are going to go down. And I'm actually gonna do this one at uh, probably one amp, which is still safe, even though it's only a 500 milliamp. Uh, some of you will probably criticize me for that, but I don't care. So that will go in there and bang. All right, so now that, that is now charging as well. You can see the fans have kicked over because we've now got both batteries, uh, both ports working. Charger might be heating up a bit. Um, that could be why the fans have turned on. So again, we can click that little plus sign. That'll give us the cells. This one was actually quite drained as you can, you can see there, 3.85. Uh, pretty well balanced though, that's pretty good. This one here, this uh, third cell's up by 0 0.01 of a volt. Hopefully by the time it finishes, it'll balance itself out. Um, so what happens if we go there, all right, nothing there. Uh, oh, there we go, look at that, 55%. So we can go into 94%. So this one's almost done. This one was about halfway drained. Uh, so very good. And now we're back to that, so if we Hit enter maybe, yeah, there we go. Enter brings it back to the home screen there. Um, so that pretty much sums up how you charge up your, your LiPo batteries and how the charger works in its very basic form. Um, of course, you can choose the chemistry, chemistry of, of, char of battery that you want to charge. So if I was to hit stop on this one here, for example, um, hit stop again, this will take me back here. I can then hit the plus sign, not the enter, but the plus sign, and I can choose life battery. There's a uh, Lilo. Uh, <laughs> LiPo high voltage, which is actually a good one. Uh, if you have some high voltage packs, this will do it as well. Uh, NIM, uh, nickel metal, uh, PB battery, not sure what that one is. Uh, and there we go, DJI uh, battery on this port uh, is available. I think it will be available on that one too. Now, this is an interesting one, DC power supply. Um, so you can hit enter here and it'll give you power from the side of the charger. However, when you're giving power from the side of the charger, you can't actually use this port to charge any batteries. So you sacrifice one half of the battery, of the charger rather, 
to power up some other device. Obviously, to power up a separate charger doesn't make a lot of sense because you've got two chargers here. Um, I would assume that this would come in handy uh, to power up different devices, perhaps uh, perhaps some tire warmers or something like that. Um, that would be what you'd power uh, this for. I'm not entirely sure, but that could be one option. Um, hit plus again, battery meter. Uh, so this is cool. So if we hit enter on that, I wonder what it'll do. There we go. That gives us our current voltage of that battery. Uh, let's go into the ne next one. Battery resistance. Uh, so this will actually measure the resistance of the of this particular pack. So the, the little one. Uh, let's see. We'll hit enter on that. And battery check. There we go. So this gives you the resistance, internal resistance of the battery. Uh, not quite sure what these numbers mean. But for some of you uh, guys out there that probably do, uh, that could mean something to you. So we'll go back. Uh, hit that plus sign again and then we're going to system settings uh, where you can do max power so 200 watts so this is interesting as well because you can set one channel to have less watts and one channel to have more watts as long as you don't of course exceed that 400 watt rating so one channel could be a little bit more powerful than the other depending on what it is that you're charging um, so this is something that is also programmable in a charger very nice um, let's see if we hit plus uh, safety timer 120 minutes so if you've got batteries that are charging uh, once it gets to an hour and a half uh, or rather <clears throat> two hours I beg your pardon once it gets to two hours it'll shut itself off um, and stop charging 5000 milliamp is maximum cutoff capacity on uh, any lipo pack that I put on here you can um, probably raise that or lower that depending on what you're charging um, and there we go uh, temperature cutoff uh, 50 C 102 uh, degrees Fahrenheit and temperature unit in Celsius. Uh, rest time, charge to discharge, 10 minutes. So you could probably cycle your batteries through this uh, by putting it on charge and then discharge as well. Um, very cool that they've actually got that, that feature and it looks as though, according to this, rest time would be the time that the battery will rest between charge and discharge. Um, so that it doesn't, uh, you know, you're not overheating your battery. Nim sensitivity peak. Uh, NICAT peak, uh, beep on, so you can take the beeper on, uh, take the beeper off or the buzzer off if you want to. Uh, DC input, cut off 11 volts. Uh, so I think that this would be the lowest amount of volts that the charger will receive. So being an input, this is for the little XT90 on the side. If the voltage drops below 11 volts, I'm assuming that that would be the cutoff point. Uh, I think balance port enabled, yes. Uh, load factory reset okay so um, we'll go into the next screen and there we go that's our version firmware that's the one that's come with it I haven't done an update on this as yet and I don't know if I will max power 200 watts and there we go okay so now um, we know what we're doing battery memory so you can store different batteries in here and there we go we're back to a LiPo battery um, to charge up this particular little guy here so we're still at 1 amp 7.2 uh, 7.4 volts press and hold checking battery to very loud and uh, confirm yep we'll hit enter and there we go it's charging this little guy again so that is its basic functions this one here you can see it's gone up to 99 percent almost done and uh, should hopefully give us a beat very very soon um, and that's really the charger that i've got at the moment of course this can go up to 20 amps per channel uh, which is fantastic especially if you want to do a bit of a fast charge uh, or you've got some really high capacity batteries that you want to be able to charge um, as i said it also it can charge up to 7s which is fantastic as well although i don't know too many people that would have 7s batteries uh, out there but uh, at least you have that uh, facility there should you want to use it um, i think i've pretty much covered everything there is to know about this charger there's probably a few other more technical aspects of it that uh, perhaps you may have some questions for. Uh, please be sure to leave those comments down uh, or those questions down in the comment section below. I'll do my best to answer them and, uh, and give you the feedback that you need. Uh, but that is pretty much it from me today. Thank you all very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a like. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new. And as always, check out the video description for more information on the charger, as well as a link to my social medias, Facebook, Instagram, and of course, Patreon if you want to help out and support the channel. Thank you again for watching, and I will speak to you next time.